Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm going to talk about open source solutions for uh, variable pay. Um, this is the overview of today's talk. Uh, first, let's take a look at an example of Verilog A. Verilog A is a hardware description language, but contrary to what most people uh, understand under uh, hardware description languages, it is intended for analog circuits. Um, this example here describes uh, a very simple parallel uh, resistor and capacitor circuit with two terminals. The description starts with some loops and then proceeds uh, with the header of the model where we find its connections, its terminals, <coughs> followed by the branches comprised by the model. And uh, next, uh, we have the description of the parameters that can be set by the user of the model. The model can also compute various quantities which can be then extracted from the simulator by the user. In our case, these are the resistor current and the capacitor's charge. The main part of the model computes, computes all these quantities and uh, also computes the contributions to uh, the model's branches. In our case, we have two contributions. Uh, resistor current is contributed to the branch and uh, the derivative with respect to time of the capacitor's charge is also contributed. Variable gain enables us also to model noise. So in this case, we contribute some white noise to the branch which originates from the resistor. Now, uh, what is the history of this thing? Actually, it is quite old. Um, Verilog itself started in 1983 uh, by a company called Gateway Design Automation, it was later acquired by Cadence, and uh, then at that point it was renamed Verilog. Um, Verilog itself uh, is uh, being developed or uh, is under the oversight of Open Verilog International, which was later renamed to Accelera, and is an IEEE standard. The standard has been gradually developing uh, all the way uh, up to today. Now, Verilog A is uh, not for digital circuits like Verilog is. It is uh, a purely analog circuit description language. Uh, it started in 1996 and it took over the uh, basic syntax of Verilog, but the semantics are, of course, completely different because they deal with analog circuits. Uh, not much later, two years later, a standard was proposed uh, for describing analog, digital, and mixed mode circuits. It was named Verilog AMS. Uh, its digital part is basically your uh, standard Verilog. Now, Verilog A and Verilog AMS are not IEEE standards. They are uh, maintained by Accelera. Uh, now, what is the main usage of Verilog A? Um, the main usage is for uh, the distribution and for the development of compact models. Basically, these are the models of semiconductor devices that are used in integrated circuit design. Now, if we uh, go through some history to see what uh, uh, advantages we get with Verilog A. Uh, you're probably familiar with the BSIN-3 model, um, which was... Uh, uh, its last version was released in the uh, year 2005, and at that time, models were being released in form of C code, usually in form of C code that can be directly attached to the SPICE-3 simulator. Now, BSIM-3 model comprised over 12,000 lines of C code, which is quite a lot. The next version, BSIM-3, uh, was also released as C code and comprised more than twice as many lines of C code. Now, what is the downside if you distribute your models in uh, C? Um, the C model, uh, in the way uh, it is used by the SPICE simulator, requires us to describe the device for each analysis separately. So uh, you have to repeat uh, equations for DC, for AC, for transient, etc. analysis. Uh, this is, of course, very verbose and uh, is also prone to errors at implementation. Now, um, the next version of the BSIM model, uh, BSIM-6, or also referred to as BSIM bulk, was released in Verilog A, and it comprises less than 5,000 lines of code. So the advantage is clear. 
Models in Verilog are uh, not given as C programs, they are given as equations. And these equations are then converted by the Verilog A compiler into uh, C or C++ source code which actually implements the model for the target simulator. Uh, this means that the model developer does not have to deal with various types of analysis. Uh, developers focus simply on the <laughs> equations and the rest is handled by the compiler. Now, uh, the underlying thing uh, below everything is, of course, the description of an analog circuit and uh, we describe analog circuits with equations. Now, uh, to demonstrate how circuits are described in circuit simulators, like, let's take a look at a very simple example. What we have here is a simple resistor capacitor and a current source connected in parallel, uh, which results in a circuit with a single node for which we need to compute the uh, uh, response. The equation which we get uh, is a simple uh, differential equation, uh, which enables us to solve for the voltage. Now we can reformulate this equation a little bit more generally uh, with two functions, G and Q which represent the resistive and the capacitive part of the circuit. And for our particular example, uh, the functions G and Q uh, can be expressed uh, with the bottom two equations. Because G and Q can be arbitrary nonlinear functions, we can describe arbitrary nonlinear circuits. Now, what happens if we have uh, multiple nodes? Uh, every, actually, everything stays the same except that uh, we get uh, n equations and n unknowns. Our two functions, g and q, are now vector valued functions and um, uh, they are actually maps from n real numbers into n real numbers. We also refer to these two functions as the resistive and the capacitive residual. Now, simulators require a little bit more than just the residual to solve the circuit. Uh, usually they require also the derivatives of the residual with respect to all unknowns. And these derivatives are gathered in the Jacobian matrices. The Jacobian matrix of function G is the conductance matrix and the Jacobian matrix of um, function Q is the capacitance matrix. Now the job of the Verilog A compiler is basically to generate a program that can compute the two um, vector valued functions and the two matrices uh, for uh, an arbitrary value of uh, the vector of unknowns. Uh, now let's uh, continue with the um, options we have uh, if we want an open source compiler for Verilog A. The oldest solution that is available is ADMS. Uh, it dates back to year 2002 and it is based on the XSL language, uh, which is a language for uh, transforming XML files. Basically, with XSL, you describe uh, how you can convert a, an input XML file into anything else, a text file or another XML file, maybe. Uh, the uh, ADMS compiler takes a Verilog A representation of the model and converts it into an XML file. And then um, ADMST files, which are basically XSL templates, are uh, used for transforming this uh, XML description of the model into C, C++ or any other language. And uh, simulator developers need only to specify uh, ADMST templates that generate models for their particular simulator. Now the major downside of uh, ADMS is uh, that uh, it is slow at compilation. And uh, another disadvantage is that it supports only a limited subset of Verilog A. A uh, better solution at this point is quite new. It's uh, the OpenVAF compiler. Um, this is also an open source compiler which takes Verilog A code and converts it into a dynamic library. Uh, the library it's itself implements the OSDI uh, application programming interface, uh, which is then used by the simulator to access the results computed by the model. The compiler itself is based on the low-level virtual machine or LLVM infrastructure. Basically, LLVM is uh, a library which enables us to build our own compiler without the need to know uh, anything about the underlying, uh, underlying uh, uh, CPU platform. Um, the compiler one develops for LLVM requires only uh, 
to output the so-called intermediate representation. And then this intermediate representation is taken by the LLVM library, optimized and converted into actual machine code. LLVM is the basis for uh, a well-known compiler C-Lang, which is uh, um, used by Apple and also for development uh, um, of programs for uh, the Android platform. Now, um, the OpenVF compiler converts the Verilog A model first into a tree, then it optimizes it, and then um, generates the intermediate representation for the LLVM library. The compiler itself is written in the Rust language, uh, which is a bit of a disadvantage because there are not so many competent Rust programmers as there are programmers for C and C++. But otherwise it uh, implements uh, a wider range of Verilog A functionality compared to uh, ADMS. Uh, now, the last contender is actually under development. Um, the development of this compiler started a year ago, um, and it is the Verilog A compiler for the GNUCAP circuit simulator. GNUCAP is uh, a simulator that started its development in 1993 and has been steadily developing uh, all the way up to today. Um, the Verilog A, Verilog A compiler um, that is uh, going to be built for this simulator um, will actually support complete Verilog AMS, which is uh, uh, actually um, um, uh, a, lot, uh, a lot to implement, because Verilog AMS standard is uh, quite extensive. Uh, even Verilog A is uh, very extensive. So um, this is maybe two birds in a bush, but uh, hopefully they will succeed in developing the compiler to the end. At this point, this compiler um, is in early stages of development and it is even hard to build it in order to test it, let alone use it for uh, anything meaningful. Now, the three simulators that support Verilog A uh, the most uh, notable ones are listed in this table. Um, the first one, the one on the right, is Cuxator. Um, this is a simulator which uh, uses spy style circuit formulation, which is a bit of a disadvantage. Um, and unfortunately, its development mostly stopped. It supported Verilog A through its ADMS interface. Now, GNUCAP uh, already supports Verilog A. Uh, it's it uh, uses the ADMS interface for that, and a new compiler is uh, being developed at this point. The most interesting contender probably is XIS. Uh, XIS has been developed by Sandia National Laboratories in the USA, and compared to most other simulators, uh, it uses a generic uh, uh, type of uh, circuit uh, equations formulation. Um, uh, it has all the features one would expect from a uh, uh, commercial simulator, and it supports uh, Verilog A through its ADMS interface. NGSPICE is another simulator which is based on the original SPICE 3 code, so the equation formulation is uh, the old SPICE style formulation, uh, and it supported uh, Verilog A through its ADMS interface, but today it is using OpenVAF, which is actually better. And the last one of them is SPICE Opus, which is our in-house development, uh, developed at uh, the EDA laboratory here at the faculty. It is also based on the original SPICE 3 code, and it supports Verilog A through its open VAF interface. Um, uh, and it is also uh, being uh, actively developed. Now, um, Verilog A uh, in... Uh, open source and in free simulators uh, has reached a point where it can be used uh, to compile uh, compact models of uh, modern semiconductor devices, of modern MOS transistors, so it is completely usable. Uh, what is missing from uh, Verilog A support today is mostly its behavioral features like uh, capabilities of, of describing uh, uh, Laplace, uh, uh, transfer functions or uh, uh, a capability of describing analog events, 
but the rest is there. So um, what we expect in the future is uh, that hopefully someone will start implementing the full Verilog AMS specification in an open source uh, Verilog compiler. Uh, this concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Again, we will take a short question. Anybody? For the record. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, concerning concerning the variable gate description, so for every circuit we need to uh, write the equations in the analog domain or just for elements? Uh, ver Verilog A itself, uh, the standard uh, allows us to describe circuits with equations and it also allows us to describe them by components, so in uh, the form of a netlist. Both styles are allowed. But uh, the Verilog A compilers, uh, which I was talking about, are primarily intended for compiling compact models. So uh, for compiling your, let's say, BSIM 11, when it comes out, uh, model. Um, but general Verilog A should be able to describe <laughs> the model and the circuit using that compact model, uh, both of them in the same file. Another one, quick one, maybe? Yep. The wise guy in the first row. Uh, since the Verilog A is based, or you describe circuits by equations only, or the components, uh, does it also allow analog behavior modeling? Uh, Verilog A, as I mentioned before, uh, but I did not emphasize that in the talk, allows us to describe the circuit uh, with equations and with components. So both styles are possible. You can define a component by equations and then build a circuit from those components just the way you would build them in a spice-like simulator. And it also allows behavioral modeling, uh, like uh, slew rate modeling and uh, analog events, for instance, cross events. But these parts are not implemented in uh, free and open source simulators at this point. Uh, and uh, compilers, of course. 